people that couldn't see this little device, um, Sean just got a network that said free Wi-Fi. It could have been airport Wi-Fi. That could have been hotel Wi-Fi. That could have been Starbucks Wi-Fi. It could be whatever, whatever I wanted to name that network. Um, and, uh, and what happened was he got what's called a captive portal, which a lot of people would be familiar with. They might not recognize the term, but what, you know, you connect to a free network in public and the screen pops up that says, like, I agree to the terms and conditions. Or if you're in a hotel room, it might say uh, you're in room 1308 and your last name is this. And then when you press submit, it tells the hotel, yeah, this is a guest. Give them access to our network. That's a captive portal. Um, what, in this case, it created a fake Google captive portal. That, it ha that looked like the real Google login. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any way you could have told, like, di differentiated that from a real Google login nope. because what you're taught in phishing attacks is to look at the URL. If the URL doesn't say google.com, then it's not real, right? Well, in captive portals, the URL just says captive.apple.com as the default. So you, there's no way to tell that's not real. Like, you're not, you, you just, can't, you should never put your credentials in, is, is basically what I'm saying, into any captive portal. 